Ready? New York State Racing Car Mutual Wagering and Breeding Law, Section 102, provides that the New York State Gaming Commission shall consist of seven members appointed by the governor, by and with the advice and consent of the Senate. Five members having been confirmed by the New York State Senate affords the commission an ability to establish a forum and undertake action. This present meeting of the commission is now called to order. Ms. Secretary, will you please call the roll? John Crotty. Here. Peter Machetti. Here. John Baclemba. Here. Barry Sample. Here. Todd Snyder. Here. Ms. Secretary, please have the record reflect that a quorum of qualified members are present, thus enabling the transaction of business. Given the absence of a designated chair, would the members like to select someone for the purpose of presiding over today's meeting? I nominate John Crotty. Second. Friday. Okay. Well, gentlemen, thank you once again. I appreciate your confidence. Um, the minutes of the commission meeting uh, conducted February 27th have been provided to the members in advance. At this time, are there any edits, corrections, or amendments? Now, Madam Secretary, please reflect the minutes were accepted. I will turn it over to the report of the executive director. Rob. Thank you. I'll, I'll be very quick this afternoon because we're running behind. I'd first like to discuss the development status of Montrain, the lone commercial casino project under development, and discuss the commission's public meetings regarding charitable gambling. Montrain reports that they have fully completed a variety of projects, including mass excavation, concrete slabs for the parking garage, both structural steel and concrete slabs for the hotel, foundations excavation and site grading, structural steel for the podium, and all foundations work. They further report that they are over 90% complete for the precast concrete structure for the parking garage, curtain wall, site utilities, concrete slabs for the podium, the exterior shell of, for the east podium, and the site retaining walls. Overall, construction is now at 48% complete. Finally, Montrain reports that during the month of January, they expended over 67,000, I'm sorry, February, uh, 67,500 union hours on the work site and have expended over 550,000 hours overall for this project. As to the charitable gambling measures, as you're all aware, Governor Andrew Cuomo's budget proposal included several measures to modernize charitable gambling. Dovetailing with those proposals, the commission set a number of public hearings designed to build upon the governor's measures and provide a forum where an affected parties could identify what more the state could do to assess charitable gambling organizations to more effectively fundraise via legal gambling. To that end, the commission held its first meeting on March 20th in Albany, where we heard suggestions and recommendations from representatives of various veterans organizations, fraternal and service organizations as well. The second meeting was conducted on March 27th at the Hempstead Public Library. And tonight, the third event will be conducted across the hallway here in Harlem, starting at five o'clock. We encourage all interested to attend and provide some insight. Additionally, meetings will be conducted in other regional locations, including Western and Central New York. While we've been diligent in sending notices to groups we know are active in the charitable gambling arena, the best manner to get accurate information on our meetings is to visit the Commission's website at www.gaming.ny.gov. Mr. Crotty. Okay, thank you, Rob. Uh, first item up is rulemaking. New York State Racing Parameter Wagering Breeding Law 104, Spot 19, authorizes the Commission to promulgate rules and regulations that it deems necessary to carry out its responsibilities. To that regard, the Commission will, from time to time, promulgate rules and rule amendments pursuant to the State Administrative Procedures Act. We have five items for consideration today. Rob, will you please outline the first one? Certainly. For Commission consideration is a proposal to conform Commission rules and thresholds for controlled therapeutic medications to national <laughs> model rule amendments recently made by the Association of Racing Commissioners International. Specifically, ARCI modified the model rule thresholds for three drugs based upon new research. These drugs are detomidine, 
Mepra, I'm sorry? Omeprazole and xylazine. <coughs> ARCI also added to the list of threshold amounts for another four routine therapeutic medications, three of these, <coughs> citerazine, cymetidine, ronitidine, are all antihistamines, and the fourth, wifenacin, is a muscle relaxant used in anesthetic protocols. The amended and newly proposed thresholds are consistent with New York's existing restricted time periods, meaning that trainers who comply with such time periods will be assured of not violating such thresholds. Staff recommends that the commission authorize the proposal of this rulemaking. <coughs> Perhaps you could talk to the marketing people of these various drugs to get more confusing. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> this is fun. Uh, I'm taking half of these. How do you think I did it? I just grow with two more legs. <laughs> you can't write Dolma. Uh, any other questions or comments regarding the uh, threshold for the controlled therapeutic medications? All right. Uh, a motion to propose this rule. So moved. Oh, Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And motion passes. The next item. For commission consideration of proposed rules for gaming facility fees and payments. At present, the commission has been applying the statute in regard to the imposition, collection, and distribution of certain required fees and assessment of costs and has not yet assessed certain other fees and costs, such as license investigation costs and regulatory costs. This proposal would formalize the process used and set forth procedures for costs not yet assessed. The proposed part addresses procedures in the annual license fees for machines and tables, procedures in regard for, to transmitting payments to the commission, rules for overdue payments, rules for regulatory <coughs> investigation fees and costs, rules for regulatory cost assessment, and distribution, procedures for distribution of taxes to counties. A section of the current accounting control rules would be repealed with the substance of such section incorporated as section 5302.3 of part 5302. Staff recommends that the commission authorize a proposal of this rulemaking. Commissioners, are there any questions on this uh, proposal of rule regarding casino fees and payments? Hearing none, may I have a motion to propose this rule? So moved. Second? Second. Okay, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Self-exclusion. Wow. For commission consideration of proposed consolidated and amended rules or regulations for self-exclusion from gaming activities, have we, as we have discussed on several occasions, the various forms of gambling in the state operate under different self-exclusion rules. We've discussed the centralization of commission self-exclusion policies to make self-exclusion universal statewide, rather than limit self-exclusion individually to each form of gambling. The proposal would require that a person file a request for self-exclusion and select a length of exclusion. A self-excluded person would be prohibited from collecting gambling winnings or recovering <coughs> any gambling losses that occurred during the exclusion period and would be subject to possible arrest for trespass if found on the premises of a place from which the individual is excluded. Among other requirements, all gaming operators would be required to establish procedures and training for their employees to identify and manage any self-excluded persons found to be present on a gaming floor or participating in gaming-related activities. Self-exclusion program elements are found in regulations for thoroughbred wagering, standard bread wagering, quarter horse wagering, off-track betting, video lottery gaming, and commercial casino gambling. The proposal before you would consolidate all into a single location. <coughs> Finally, the current rules allow for voluntary self-imposed restrictions in account wagering. These existing standards would be consolidated into a new part 5403, eliminating duplicative provisions currently in the thoroughbred, standard bred, quarter horse, and off-track betting rules. Please note that the proposed text under consideration is a revised copy which was circulated to you this past Friday. Staff recommends that the commission authorize the proposal of this rulemaking. Commissioners, any questions on the rules? Self-exclusion. May I have a motion to propose this rule? So moved. 
Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That does not apply to gaming commissioners. <laughs> <laughs> You're banned by statute. Yeah. Uh, number uh, four. For commission consideration are amendments to various casino licensing regulations. Initial experience with occupational licensing applications suggests that certain rules could be clarified or modified to enhance the licensing process. This proposal includes clarifying that an applicant denied a license or registration based on criminal history is not barred from applying for a different position, as the relevancy of the criminal history may differ upon the position for which the applicant applies. Clarifying standards for licensure or registration by incorporating statutory cross-references to important provisions or otherwise setting forth standards by regulation. Clarifying that incomplete or misleading information on an occupational license or registration application may result in the denial of licensure. Eliminating a provision that is inconsistent with the practice of temporary licensure of gaming employee registrants. Clarifying standards for gaming employee registrants by incorporating statutory cross-reference to important provisions. Clarifying the duration of a non-gaming employee registration. Clarifying the circumstance under which certain vendors are not required to be registered. And prohibiting owners, managers, supervisory personnel, and employees of casino vending enterprise or ancillary casino vendor enterprise licenses that provide services to a gaming facility from wagering at such facility. Staff recommends that the commission authorize the proposal of this rulemaking. Okay, commissioners, any questions on the proposal of rule regarding casino licensing amendments? No. None. May I have a motion? So. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Uh, number five, Mega Millions. For commission consideration is a change to the Mega Millions game intended to be effective nationwide with sales effective on October 28, 2017, for the drawing on October 31st, 2017. As you are aware, the New York Lottery is a member of a consortium of state and territorial lotteries throughout the United States which operate the Mega Millions and Powerball games. The multi-state consortium has resolved to modify the Mega Millions game matrix, which sets forth win probabilities and prizes. Should the commission choose not to adopt the consortium's rule changes, lottery would be required to eliminate Mega Millions from its game portfolio. The most significant of the proposed rule change is that the cost of a ticket will increase from $1 to $2. Other rule changes approved by the consortium are intended to create larger jackpot amounts. This will be accomplished by decreasing the size of the first set of numbers from which a player chooses from 75 to 70, while increasing the size of the second set of numbers from 15 to 25. The consortium also changed prize payouts for non-jackpot prizes. Third prize will increase from $5,000 to $10,000. Fifth prize will increase from $50 to $200. Sixth and seventh prizes will increase from $5 to $10. Eighth prize will increase from $2 to $4. And ninth prize will increase from $1 to $2. Staff recommends that the commission authorize the proposal of this rulemaking. I just have a quick question. Please. Um, there, there's going to be a revenue enhancement to to us? Yes. Uh, ultimately, it doesn't the, all go to the, the multi-state? No. Ultimately, we share on, on a variety of different things, but there is a revenue enhancement anticipated with the higher jackpots. And, and so our review is that this, this works for us? Yes. Yeah. To clarify, Commissioner Snyder, all the, all the Mega Millions tickets sold in New York are New York lottery revenue. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you. And it's a discreet promotion. It's just that one drawing, October 31st. No, no, no. It's it's starting on October 31st, and, and from then on, with, Mexico, oh, okay. with Mega yeah. Millions. There you go. Any sense of what the odds go to? They were uh, one in like 172 million. I, I do have that yeah. matrix, and I'll send it. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's, a, yeah it's in the text. So to, uh, to, we'll, we'll send it to we'll with it. Okay. Uh, commissioners, any questions? Uh, any more questions? Any rules? Uh, may I get a motion to propose this rule? So moved. Second? Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. Uh, adjudications. The next item uh, scheduled on our uh, next item of scheduled are adjudications. Today we have four items for adjudication. Mr. Williams. The first is in the matter of Moomore 
think on November 3rd, 2016, the Bureau of Licensing issued a notice of license suspension and ordered the immediate temporary suspension of the lottery sales agent license of Moormar, Inc., which is located at 776 East 80th Street in Brooklyn. The notice informed Moormar that suspension was for failure to comply with the commission's instructions in regard to licensed activity and for fraud, deceit, misrepresentation, or conduct prejudicial to the public confidence in the state lottery. The notice also stated that the owner of record, Moormar Alshawesh, had been arrested for several alleged felonies, including possession of a forged instrument, attempt to evade a cigarette or tobacco tax, and possession or offering for sale unstamped cigarettes. The notice stated that the suspension would become a revocation unless Moormar, Inc. requested a hearing. Pursuant to New York Tax Law Section 1607D, a lottery license may be suspended or revoked for fraud, deceit, misrepresentation, or conduct prejudicial to confidence in the state lottery. A lottery license may also be suspended or revoked upon violation of the licensing agreement or upon a finding by the commission that the agent's experience, character, and general fitness are such that the agent's participation as a lottery sales agent is inconsistent with the public interest or convenience or for any other reason within the discretion of the commission. After a request by Moormar, a hearing was conducted on January 26, 2016. The hearing off, uh, 17, excuse me. The hearing officer submitted a report to the commission's acting secretary on February 1st. The hearing officer recommended that the license be suspended pending the outcome of the criminal proceedings against Mr. Alshawish, and that should Mr. Alshawish be convicted, that the license re be revoked and the period of the date of suspension to such revocation be a suspension of the license. The commission considered this matter at a meeting conducted pursuant to the judicial or quasi-judicial proceedings exemption of New York Public Officers Law Section 108.1. Commission did do, uh, duly deliberate this uh, and consider the matter. We modified the hearing officer's uh, report and recommendation and concluded that the license was revoked. The vote was four to one with Mr. Machete in the dissent. Just Next. for clarification, yeah, my position was that I wanted to sustain the hearing officer's finding, Noted. including the uh, suspension pending outcome. Noted. Rob? Next item is in the matter of John W. Gray. On January 27, 2017, the Bureau of Licensing denied the license application of John W. Gray for a gaming employee registration in connection with potential employment at Del Lago, citing Commission Rule 5305.2C. Such rule refers to the standard set forth in New York Racing, Paramutual Wagering, and Breeding Law Section 1318 which provide that the disqualifying criteria include, at subdivision C, the conviction of the applicant of any offense in any jurisdiction which is or would be a felony or other crime involving public integrity, embezzlement, theft, fraud, or perjury, and sub D, if the applicant committed prior acts which have not been prosecuted or in which the applicant was not convicted but form a pattern of misconduct that makes the applicant unsuitable for a license. Mr. Gray requested a hearing, which was scheduled for March 22nd. Mr. Gray failed to appear at either of the designated hearing locations for the hearing. The hearing officer submitted a report to the commission's acting secretary dated March 28, 2017, recommending that the applicant's gaming employee registration denial be affirmed. The commission considered this matter at a meeting conducted pursuant to the judicial or quasi-judicial proceedings exemption of New York Public Officers Law Section 108.1. Uh, the commission did deliberate this matter, uh, voted to sustain the hearing officer's report and recommendation. The commission further notes that the hearing officer's conclusion that the applicant's failure to appear be deemed a withdrawal of his application and that Mr. Gregory's failure to appear is is formally the withdrawal of that application. Of this appeal. Of this appeal, excuse me. Uh, the matter of Susan uh, Her call. Her call. Her call. Her call. 
On January 27, 2017, the Bureau of Licensing denied the application of Susan Hercom for a gaming employee registration in connection with potential employment as a dealer at Del Laga, citing Commission Rule 5305.2C. Such rule refers to the standard set forth in New York Racing Paramutual Wagering and Breeding Law Section 1318, which provide that the disqualifying criteria include the conviction of the applicant of any offense in which any jurisdiction, in any jurisdiction which would or is a felony or other crime involving public integrity, embezzlement, theft, fraud, or perjury. Ms. Hercom requested a hearing, which was conducted on March 22nd. The hearing officer submitted a report dated March 30th with a recommendation that the commission denial of the gaming employee registration be upheld and affirmed. The commission considered this matter at a meeting conducted pursuant to the judicial or quasi-judicial's proceeding exemption of New York Public Officers Law Section 108.1. The commission duly deliberated and considered this matter and determined on a vote of five to nothing to sustain the hearing officer's report and recommendations. We also note that this decision is effective to the applicant's temporary gaming employee registration. We move on to the matter of Mr. Lang. On January 26, 2017, the Bureau of Licensing denied the application of Michael P. Lang for a gaming employee registration in connection with potential employment as a surveillance agent at Del Lago Casino in Tyre, citing commission rule section 5305.2C. Such rule refers to the standard set forth in New York Race and Paramutual Wagering and Breeding Law Section 1318, which provide that disqualifying criteria include, at subdivision C, the conviction of the applicant of any offense in any jurisdiction which is or would be a felony or other crime involving public integrity, embezzlement, theft, fraud, or perjury. Mr. Lang requested a hearing, which was held March 22, 2017. The hearing officer submitted a report dated March 30. The hearing officer recommended that the commission approve and grant Mr. Lang his gaming employee registration. The commission considered the matter at a meeting conducted pursuant to the judicial or quasi-judicial proceedings exemption of New York Public Officers Law Section 108.1. The commission duly deliberated and considered this matter and determined on a vote of five to nothing to sustain the hearing officer's report and recommendation. We also note this decision is effective as to the applicant's temporary gaming employee registration. We move on to old business. Any matters for old business? We have none scheduled. Do we ever, are we further along in our fantasy football or fantasy rules? Ed, would you like to provide an update on that? Yes, we've submitted to our temporary or temporary permittees a draft of potential regulations and held a meeting in New York City last month to discuss some preliminary comments that they gave back and we're taking those into consideration before we propose a set of regulations to the commissioners. Do we have an EPA for any of this? It's possible that they could be ready in time for next month's commission meeting. Did they offer a lot of comments? They did. Anyone else? New business? There's none scheduled. Perfect. We will be scheduling the next meeting, so we'll need to speak with Ms. Buckley on May 22nd. When's Memorial Day? The week following. The week following, okay, great. So the tentative date is the 22nd. This is what it says. That concludes the published agenda today. Anything else for consideration? No. All right, hearing none, this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Outstanding. Outstanding. Not mild, but outstanding. Outstanding.